Okay, today's shir in Naale is Lili Nishus Rachalebas Reb Chaim Tzvi. Hello, Shalom. And this is our Chazak, our final class of the semester. And uh, here again we have the old problem what we've encountered of how do you tell the story, which is the mandate of this class, when Bamidbar is really appropriately translated in English as inappropriately translated, but remember, translated as numbers, because it's the census. So I'm going to tell you some matters in the beginning of general nature, and um, then we'll move on to some of the psukim. So it begins the census. Who is to take the census? Moshe and Aaron. Why, pray tell, is it Moshe and Aaron who take the census? Wouldn't it make more sense that you should have a clerk do it? Why do you need the greatest people in the whole generation to take the census? <coughs> And it also is called Kisis uh, Rosh, when you lift up the heads. Why call lifting up heads? You're counting. One, two, three, four. Why lifting heads? So the answer is that when a Jew and individual stood before Moshe and Aaron to receive their blessings, there's no question about it. It was an uplifting experience, going before these great people. And we have this today. And my friend was telling me uh, that he took the boys in his yeshiva. This is a yeshiva for boys that are uh, uh, not especially strong not from strong uh, backgrounds, not from a strong education. And he brought them for a great Ungadol in America. And he said they went to this Gadol, and it was such an experience that after they got in the car to drive away, they'd all driven out there because they're going to a wedding, and he arranged that on their way to the wedding, they stopped off to meet this Gadol. And they sat for a good 20, 25 minutes. In the car afterwards, they just sat down. Silence. The, the just, boys were just absorbed in their thoughts. The experience of uplifting it was, how elevating how, what an experience this was. It was, he says, well, she lift up the heads. It was an elevating experience. Uh, in the secular world, uh, the census is not an uplifting experience. In the secular world, a census is a very, you're a faceless individual. You're just one more number, one more statistic. But here it is, lift up the heads because it's an uplifting experience. And that's not how I was done by Moshe and Aaron. Okay, then we have uh, the Shevet of Levi. As you're striving to a higher level of holiness, you can actually raise the level of divine providence that you receive. So Levi, who's the son of Yaakov, he outlived all of his brothers, and he had the most profound effect upon his children. This is the one tribe in all of Mitzrayim that were able to perform brismila and circumcise even when they were in Mitzrayim. Of course, this was the one tribe which did not participate in the sin of the Egel Hazav of the Golden Calf. So, at Moshe, Moshe proclaims our Sinai, Mila Shemela, whoever's on God's side, come to me. And who responded? Exclusively Shevet Levi. Moshe makes the great appeal, whoever is for God, come join me. And only Levi heeded this request. And then they were the ones who then administered the punishment to the others. It was 3,000 people. Now that sounds like an awful lot, and I don't belittle one individual. However, you make a simple calculation, this was even less than half a percent of the entire population. And this made the Levim special for all subsequent generations. There's a well-known story, which is certainly appropriate to tell here, that the great God, the Chafetz Chaim, the one who has changed, right, the man of the century, the one who's done more than anyone else for changing Jewish life. So the Chafetz Chaim once met, uh, I heard the story he said it once to a, uh, he said to a, uh, to Rabbi Schwab. Rabbi Schwab was a young boy. Rabbi Schwab, the rabbi of the Yakish Kihila in Washington Heights. When he came to visit him, uh, he asked him, do you know why I'm a Kohen? So he said, because your father's a Kohen. He said, why is my father a Kohen? Because his father's a Kohen. So the reasons are following. And the story is told about the Chafetz Chaim, and it's told about, he said to another Kohen, why is it, the reason you're a Kohen, the reason I'm not a Kohen is simply because so, I'm sorry, he said to Rabbi Shabbat, so why isn't you? I didn't say it, I'm sorry. Chas Chaim said to me, you know why I'm a Kayin? So Rabbi Shabbat said, because your father's a Kayin. He said, why aren't you a Kayin? Because my father wasn't a Kayin. He said, no, there's more to it. Said to Chas Chaim, the reason that your father and grandfather wasn't a Kayin or a lady is because when Moshe Beno said, Mila Shem Eli, my great-great-grandfather, he joined the call. And your great-grandfather didn't. So that's why I am a Kayin. You have to hear the call. Okay, now, this brings us to also the idea of Jewish pluralism. The image of the camp of B'nai Israel is like a wheel with many spokes, all coming out, all emanating from one hub. Many ways to be a good Jew. There's 12 tribes, there are Kohanim, there's Levim, there's Israelim, there's Ashkenazim, there's Sephardim, there are different kinds of Hasidim. All of them have different priorities, but they're all with one goal. 
And that one goal is to be connected to a closeness to the Almighty. So following the path of the Tarulo, that's our job. In other words, we have to understand that in the idea of Jewish pluralism, everyone has a right. If your goal is to have service to God, you can be a chassid, you can be a breast of a chassid, a, a bayan a chassid, a, a karlina chassid, you can be a, any Jew you want. But if you think Jewish pluralism means you can be, for example, Mati Berger, you want to believe in Jesus and be a Jew, that's not called Jewish pluralism. That's not. It's all when the, all the hubs, all the spokes go to one thing, which is belief in God. Once you change that, that's pluralism. We see in the camp, all reunited in our Parsha, around the camp surrounding the Mishkan, that was all different aspects of one diamond, all glittering from 